Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and featuring along the same theme as we have done all week, another underused restricted Pokemon. And today's Pokemon is gonna be Zekrom. So it is the Dragon and Electric type and very unique type and very rarely seen, but I think has a decent place in the format in the right settings, of course. It's not gonna be a top tier pokemon but it's a lot of fun to use and also look at as well for other options uh we've got a spawn cast of rillaboom with the assault fest we've got a uh, togekiss because we've got a dragon dan zekrom set feel like the redirection especially from things like landorus incarnate with the earth powers that are going to be a little bit more problematic and make a lot of sense here we've got mama swine again helps out with that landorus threat um, and also the intimidate threat that you're going to see throughout the format from things like incineral with the oblivious ability on mama so I'm going to be able to ignore that. Focus Sash gives it a little bit of security. We've got the type of finny to switch in, a bit more of a, a staple. Tapu Fini set in this one with the Calm Mind variant gives us a little bit of room. We've got two terrains as well to kind of disrupt opposing terrain support and then wrapping up with Talon Flame, giving us another flying type to the team, but gives us that priority uh, Tailwind that is very valuable to a lot of things, especially the Mammoth Swine and the Zekrom on the team. So uh, the Pogapist is available down in the comment section as it always is. We'll have a couple of games with the team now and then I'll throw the rental code for this team up at the end of the episode. So if you'd like to try it out for yourselves, stick around until the end of the episode we'll have a couple of games and show you how to kind of pilot against hopefully some popular meta teams and see what it can do so without further ado friends hope you enjoyed today's episode drop a comment down below let me know your thoughts on Zekro and what you think of it as a restricted if you tried it I don't expect many of you have done so far this format but do give it a try do give it a chance it's a cool Pokemon and uh, we'll jump into our first game of today's episode first up today we have a Rotom Wash Landorus Therian Form, Xerneas, Glissopod, Incineroar, and Mandibuzz. I mean, all week we've been starting off with some really kind of unique teams, so it goes within the trend today. It's nice to see some other things being used as well on the channel from opposing players as well. Always nice to see those metagame teams, but what are we looking at here? Where's the support coming from? The Xerneas main support is going to be like the fake out from Incineroar. It doesn't have any redirection here. There's Tailwind potentially from the Mandibuzz that can... Uh, Causes a few issues, of course. Uh, and the Rotom Wash, not really a huge issue because we've got Rillaboom there. Uh, Zekrom going to be threatened by the Xerneas for sure. Uh, so we need to be a little bit careful for that one. Um, but our own Talonflame kind of helps us out a lot here. Uh, it's just we don't really want to allow the Xerneas to kind of get set up, which is the big thing for us. I think Togek is going to do a nice bit of work for us in this game. Got to be careful around the Gal Galissapod turn one um, with the, the, the first impression, especially if we bring Rillaboom here. Um, we could potentially go Tapu Fini, but we want to try and utilize the Yawn, I think. So something like Mama Swine probably lay out a nice chunk of damage uh, initially. We'll go Zekrom and we'll go Rillaboom in the back. And uh, I don't know if we'll need the Tailwind in this match, but I might be wrong about that one. <laughs> Talonflame does all right, to be to be honest, with like the, the big Brave Bird it can get off into the Xerneas if it does get the, the Geomancy set up. Uh, also hits a Galissapod for pretty good damage, but other than that, the Tailwind, I don't know if it'll be massively necessary in this one. So, see what my opponent goes with. Imagine Incineroar, Xerneas potentially. Yeah. Um, and they can fake out the, the Togekiss here. They can. If they stop the yawn, it makes it a little bit more tricky for us, for sure. Uh, but they can just go for the Geomancy. Um, we'll go yawn. Uh, and we'll go for an Icicle Crash into that Xerneas. We need to get the yawn off. That's the big thing for us here. If we can just put that Xerneas to sleep, that'll be huge for us. Um, I'd imagine because, you know, well... Okay, Incineroar switching out, that's perfect. If we see the, the Geomancy here, that's, I mean, ideal. And they just go straight for a move last, which is still fine. Um, we have to take a massive chunk of damage for our troubles, but it's not the worst as we get the Yawn off. And we either force the Xerneas out now, or it goes to sleep. Yeah. 
can get some nice damage onto it as well at the same time. So I think what we'll do is we'll switch into Rillaboom and we will protect our good old Mammo here because, like I say, they either switch to Incineroar from Xerneas or uh, they stay in an attack. Um, and if they attack, then they go they go to sleepy buys. But the Rillaboom going to be able to come in, take a potential electric type attack from the um, from the Rotom pretty pretty well, and then we can pressure with Fake out the next turn onto the Incineroar if we need to, uh, or we can pressure with with um, Grassy Glide as well. So we also have the ability now to Fake out into the Incineroar and get Zekrom onto the field. Um, which could be a decent option for us as well. And Rillaboom in without being intimidated is always a nice, nice option here. Could have had the opportunity to go for a high horsepower potentially into the Incineroar slot, but uh, we do see a Volt Switch come out. Okay, so I'd imagine the Xerneas to come back in now. Um, but we've got the active fake out. I mean, they've got the active fake out as well, which is a little bit annoying. But I mean, we can switch back straight into something like um, Togo Kiss here. Just fake out the Xerneas. Because it's likely they fake out Mama Swine just to get rid of it, I think. Makes sense too. Ooh, it's Mandibuzz. Okay. Well, don't mind seeing Mandy come in. Because we can just fake out Incineroar. I mean, we can double into Incineroar now if we want. Um, got to be a bit careful around a potential Brave Bird from... I mean, we can fake out and we can high horsepower into Incineroar. The only issue here would be if we see the Rotom come back onto the field. Uh, but it's a little bit risky because... Yeah, there's a Faker coming from the Incineroar. My horsepower come out. Just Brave Bird will deal with the Rillaboom pretty well here. Okay, they Tailwind. That's fine. We've got priority attacks on both our Pokemon, so it's not that big a deal. Um, and a, a Grassy Glide and an Ice Shard will be enough to get the, uh, the Xerneas if it comes back onto the field. Getting rid of the Incineroar is nice because then they don't have that kind of line of support through Intimidate and Fake Out. Which can be a little bit annoying to deal with. Okay. So we either double protect now. I think we can double protect this turn. Uh, oh, we can't double protect this turn. The Grassy Glide. I expect, I expect the Xerneas to protect here. Do we just Ice Shard Grassy Glide? They can only take one thing down, right? Well, they don't even protect the Xerneas, so we should be able to get it. Yeah. Ooh, the crit. The crit might matter. But there we go. Okay, dealing with the Xerneas pretty handily. Now that threat's gone, Zekrom has an absolute field day against what's left. Uh, foul play, no Brave Bird coming out. So, uh, Rotom in a bad, bad, bad shape. We didn't even need Zekrom in this game, but we've got to bring Zekrom in. We've got to bring it in, I think. Uh, Rotom left, so... Grassy Glide into Rotom, and we can... I think we just Ice Shard, because it's not likely that Mamo gets an attack off here. Ooh, I like Switch. Ha! Okay. Right, Zekrom's definitely come to the party. What are we going to lose? Rillaboom, I think you go after. I think you prioritize Rillaboom here. Yeah. The ally switch is a little bit annoying. But, like I say, it does open the door for uh, Zekrom to come on to the field. I've got to watch out for that foul play, of course. But I think we've got a nice switch where we can protect here. We can protect. Zekrom switch into Togekiss. There's no way the, the Rotom's going for a Thunderbolt into the, the Mammoth Swine slot. And it's likely that we probably see um, Ally switch again anyway. But I mean, it, it, like at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Because what we can do by getting the Togekiss onto the field is just redirect those foul players and get a free Dragon Dance off. And then, I mean, then the Mandibus doesn't really have a way to, to deal with the, with the Zekrom.
So Mama going out. And we'll get the kiss back on the field. Like I say, that redirection here gonna be so useful for Zekrom. Didn't think we'd need Zekrom to be honest. Will O Wisp coming out from the uh the old Rotom and Roosh coming out from the Mandibuzz. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Or Will O Wisp. I think we take a combination of like the thing is the tailwind ends here, so do we go dragon? No, tailwind ends next turn, doesn't it? I think we got one more turn of tailwind. No, oh, it's ended. It's done. Um, I think we dragon. Do we dragon dance? Yeah, we dragon dance and redirect. Follow me, because we can pull away. Like we should take a thunderbolt from the Rotom. No problem. And it feels like a bit more of a sport of Rotom anyway. So I don't think it's going to be like super offensive. Definitely not going to be life or. Uh, they probably suspect the redirect here, but then after one dragon dance, we're going to be we're going to be able to just get rid of everything. Foul play is not going to do anything at all if they go for the foul play with the mandibles. Um I mean, they could tailwind, but again, it's not really going to save them in this situation. And I think we just target down the rotom this next turn. Uh, foul play coming out. Yep, the burn kind of helping us take that way better. Uh, and now dragon dance Zekrom can do the biz for us we may see protect we may see protect i mean that we could just go after the mandibus here and just redirect again because it really doesn't it doesn't make any difference it's just if they get the tailwind up it makes it a little bit more complicated but there we go battle cancelled so dealing with the xerneas the xerneas isn't a great matchup for this team honestly you have to play it super carefully um but you do have ways to kind of deal with it you do have ways to deal with it like i mentioned talent flame we didn't bring to that game is a way to deal with it uh but very good game to my opponent nice one for us to kick off with today and we'll jump into game two okay next up today we have a lugia entai and dd female rillaboom urshifu and grimsnarl very interesting looking team obviously the restricted gonna be that lugia not something that you see too often but uh zekrom has a really good matchup against it to be honest uh what's going to be tricky for us to deal with here there's no intimidate for us to worry about sacred fire going to be a little bit obnoxious especially if they are able to get the burn but we do have you know terrain support with the tapu fini to kind of help out there they do have the rillaboom uh that's going to cause us a few issues of course i wonder what kind of urshifu that is is it the water variant it probably is rapid strike i'd imagine so i think what we'll do is go zekrom Hmm, we could go Talonflame. Talonflame's pretty nice here, to be honest. Talonflame with Tailwind does help us out a bunch. Uh, I think we go Zekrom up top. I think we want Double Flying here. Makes sense. I think Talonflame and Togekiss. I mean, we could just go Togekiss as a lead here as well. And Talonflame and then Tapu Fini as well in the back. Because Tapu Fini makes a lot of sense in this match overall so let's lock in with these four and let's see what we can do against this lugia a nice trainer card with that meow reminds me of the g max meow card or v max i should say the trading card game always puzzled me like why why tcg went v max and not g max i guess they didn't want g cards yes because that's what these would be g's than why anyway enough of that we're gonna see bulldoze is an option and they can extreme speed away we could go for a yawn onto um the anti i mean we could just dragon dance as well and switch into tabu finny Just a bulldoze. Bulldoze makes it a little bit more obnoxious to deal with. I mean, we could scout out turn one as well. Scout out. We could go for a yawn into Entai. It just kind of stops us bringing Tapu Fini in the next turn, potentially. But then are they just going to switch out anyway if they are yawned this next turn? Sacred Fire. Okay. So we don't need to worry about the bulldoze. And no redirect as well from the uh, the Ndidi here, which is always another thing. But I mean, if you get the Yawn onto the Ndidi, not really too worried about that either. So, but if Sacred Fire is their best line of uh, support, then I think we're kind of all right. 
just whether or not we uh, we go for the Dragon Dance and switch into Finny. We could switch into Talonflame. I just don't want to take the expanding force damage, you know? I think we bring in... I think they're going to switch Entai out because the Yawn... Like, at this position, they're like, uh, Entai probably goes to sleep. But even if it doesn't, we get the Dragon Dance. We are going to prevent it if it doesn't switch out, of course. It likely isn't going to switch because it would have went before uh, Togekiss, to be honest, I think. Yeah, Sacred Fire again. Dragon out Typhoon, we're not really worried about that too much. Um, we can get the Dragon Dance off now. We're in a good spot. No worries about getting burned either. We can just start getting rid of stuff. We could probably set up a Calm Mind as well with Tapu Fini this next turn. Where are you going? After the Zekrom? Yeah. Okay, but not boosted. Still does a nice chunk of damage though, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so... Do we just Calm Mind here? We've got the opportunity to. We could just attack. We could go on the offensive. Might be better to go after the Ndidi. Yeah, and Calm Mind. I think it's nice, nice play because the end time not really causing us too many issues. So, oh, it's scarfed end time. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, this is enough. It should be with the life orb to get the, the DD. Yeah. Look at that animation. So cool. Such a cool animation. Zekrom is the is the boy. Uh, but obviously, the sacred fire being scarfed as well causes us a few issues but I mean Tapu Fini now in a great spot to uh, just start putting some damage out into the field but I'm surprised scarfed Entai not something I've really seen before but uh, and this does complicate things a little bit for us it's dark I think we have to we have to we have to bring in Togekiss now I think um, Go Moonblast. Moonblast and then we can Muddy Water the next turn. But we'll keep Zekrom because we want to keep it for the Lugia matchup for sure. And then even if we need to, we are losing the Dragon Dance here, but we can get the Tailwind up uh, with Talonflame. And even if the Yoshifu Sash, which it likely is here, we'll take it down to the Sash now. We can Muddy Water the next turn that kind of opens up the door for Ooh, Sacred Fire and into the Finny. Wicked Blow, where are we going? Togekiss, yeah. You have to go after the Zekrom, right? I'm surprised that Entai didn't, though, because if we stay on the field, then we get an attack off with Zekrom there. Likely pick up the knockout onto the Entai, but I mean, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. Taking it down there, fuck Sesh, and then I guess we just air slash into the Entai and, and Muddy Water. They're going to be able to get their, their attacks off, but I mean, nothing. I mean, we can protect here if we want. Can't protect on the Urshifu, but the Urshifu likely, I think, last stitch attack probably goes for a Wicked Blot into Finny anyway. Okay, Let's switch out, Lugia gonna hit the field. That's fine. And at least we got a uh, redirection for the next turn. Yeah, they got Sacred Fire here. Hopefully the Muddy Water plus one is enough to get the Entai. It has to be more offensive. Okay, not not quite enough. Do we get an accuracy drop? We do on the Lugia. Not on the inside. Uh, but we're not really in any sort of trouble, are we, at this stage? Um, I mean, the Lugia is a little bit obnoxious to deal with. We'll try and get a Yawn off onto it. I can't guarantee that we will be able to. Uh, we'll just go for another Muddy Water at this point. Sacred Fire going into Togekiss. Yeah, going to take away that Yawn. Uh, but then we'll bring in Talonflame, get the Tailwind up. Ooh, yeah, we're going to need Zekrom to finish that thing off. And we need to deal with the Urshifu before Zekrom comes onto the field again. So the, the Muddy Water here, quite useful. Um, as long as you get the Entai. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll go Moonblast, Tailwind, and then that sets up Zekrom to come in to deal with Illuvia after that. And if Talonflame can stick around, then that's that's ideal for us. But the Tailwind going to be the big, the big play for us to get Zekrom in, uh, and then double up into that Lugia. Really, we want 
it, what's its item? Has it got has it got leftovers or what what does it have? No, 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 it's fine. So we tailwind here um, and the moon blast, like I say. We don't want to risk going muddy water here. It's not worth it because if you miss the, the Urshifu and they take down Talonflame, then we've got to get Zekrom onto the field. We've got to then worry about um obviously the Urshifu, like anything could happen at that point. So we just want to try and tie this up. We don't want Zekrom in a position where it has to think about anything other than just getting a big attack into the uh, into the Lugia. Now, this makes things a bit more tricky as we get the Tailwind up, so it means Finny will be able to outspeed this next turn onto the Urshifu, which is good. Uh, and, the, and we're just seeing the other command. It means that Talonflame can get a Brave Bird off into the uh, the Lugia. And with the Brave, the, the, the Sharp Beak, we should do a bit more damage to it as well, which is useful. So, I don't expect Lugia to have Protect either, I don't think. I don't think it's really got room, really ever got room for it. So, Brave Bird, like I say, and one Moon Blast. They may go for a Sucker Punch into Talonflame, but a Sucker Punch isn't going to be enough, I don't think, to get it, especially because it's Sashed. It'd be a different story, I think, if it's Banded. So, we'll get some nice damage. Oh, and of course, we've still got our Gale Wings intact right now, so that's good. Wow. We just need another one of those, to be honest, and that will do it. Sucker Punch, yeah, because the Gale Wings, in effect, I forget about that. Um, and that enough to get the Urshifu, and then it's just Lugia versus the world, and we got a Zekrom in the back, so we're kind of all right, even if we lose something here. Ooh, a cover coming out. Okay, well... The problem is we don't want to be in a situation where we lose like a tailwind, the ability to tailwind. Yeah, we've got one more turn. Okay, I think they're gonna recover again. Do we can't mind again? I think we can't mind. No, I think we pressure with Moonblast because we can get the, the special attack drop. They've got to attack at some point. If they don't, then we're gonna be in a position where we can get the tailwind up again. Like they've got to like they have to attack, yeah. Otherwise, they recover. We attack again, you know. Yeah, and I think actually this time around we'll probably do enough damage to just get the knockout. I don't think it's able to recover enough to deal with the talent flame. So we might not even get to see Zekron come in here. But they do have protect. That's interesting. But that's that's actually alright because ah, it's a bit annoying to be honest. Because I think one thing we could potentially do is tailwind with they're gonna recover, right? They're gonna recover this next turn. Tailwind Pit is out, they may attack. I think what we'll do is Tailwind, we'll switch Tapu Fini out to Zekrom. The, the only way this could bite us is if they attack into the Finny here. I don't think they do. I think they need to get rid of the Talon Flame and I think they recover anyway. So if they do recover, we're kind of all right because then we just pin it. If they knock out Zekrom, it gets a lot tougher because we obviously lose our Calm Mind boost, but they recover, so we're all right. And now we can just go for Bolt Strike, Brave Bird, and we're all good. Brave Bird, Bolt Strike, and that should wrap the game up for us. They're going to have multi scale. Okay, protecting. They're going to protect their way out of this. I don't think they're going to be able to. Triple Protect is what they need. Ah, oh, come on. Get the salt out, ladies and gentlemen. Bad sportsmanship. Okay, well, we would have won that, friends. <gasps> it was us! No! I gotta, I gotta go and down a pint of salt. I can't believe that. We would have won that. We would have won that, 100%. There's no way they win that. In a million years. Ah. Oh. I'm so sad about that. I am so sad about that. And I have to admit, hands up high. Big apology to my opponent. I guess it means that we can push in. Why is my internet doing this to us though? And my internet's fine. I have the, the bot from the Discord running right now. It's running right now. Nothing else has dropped off line. I hate the Switch sometimes. I wish Nintendo would just make a console that had good Wi-Fi. Uh, like everything else and I don't have a spare Ethernet cable because I have it plugged into my computer So I know I'm complaining, but I just wish 
Nintendo devices never have the best Wi-Fi equipment, in my opinion. Anyway, so we're going to get rid of a team. I have to get rid of the Eternatus team because you don't have room for anything else at the minute. Everything else was put up this week. There's my little rant out the way, but uh, it all started with the, the DS. The DS was terrible. You had to buy a dongle back in the day. Um, and then the 3DS wasn't any, any better, was it? So, uh, yeah, anyway, anyway, enough of that. But it happens far too often. It's either a server issue or it's an issue with the, the, the Switch. And I would put it down to probably ball, but ball to be honest, um, because they've never been generally that good. But on a lighter note, friends, here is the rental card for today's team. Run over with, I'm a little bit sad that we lost that last one when we really should have won it. We were in a, a, such a dominant position in that end game. Talent Flames, an absolute beast. Zekrom is an absolute beast. Mama Swine's a beast. Everything on the team's a beast. If you do try the team out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. It is a lot of fun to play around with. And of course, it's not a massively serious one. It wouldn't be a, a, a team I take to a tournament. It's something that is a bit of fun. And we are using it because it's an underused Pokemon. And hopefully it might inspire some ideas for you. You know, there are some really good Pokemon on here. Mama Swine, I think very good in the format at the minute, uh, especially with its oblivious ability. Talonflame, another Pokemon I think very good at the minute. You know, if you give it uh, your wing beat, it's a really good way to stop in something like Whimsicott, especially if they're sashed. You can stop them getting the Tailwind up before, you know, before uh, before they can uh, get that Prankster Tailwind up because you'll hit them first because you're faster generally. Zekrom as well, a great Pokemon against things like uh, Kyogre and Tornadus that are kicking around at the minute. And uh, the Dragon Dance is really nice if you can support it well enough. Tabu Finny as well. Really great. Can't sing its praises enough, and we don't even need to mention Rillaboom, do we? But that wraps up the week. We've had five teams this week. We are back with content full on, so we'll hopefully continue that next week. Hopefully, I've been able to get some streams up as well this week. It's been a lot of fun doing it. Hopefully, you've enjoyed all the teams, the rental codes, and everything like that. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on what your favorite team has been this week on the channel, and uh, I look forward to reading through all of those and getting back to you as soon as I can, friends. So have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. Have a great weekend. Now I'll catch you for another episode next week. So until then, friends, take care and bye-bye.